In this video, I'm going to try to do a simple conversion of getting this old junker box fan and put a filter on it. I know a lot of people have been kind of coming up with very simple homemade air purifiers or air filters, whatever you want to call it. Using this method, I haven't done it yet. There's some okay documentation online if you want to do it using a single filter or three filters or whatever, uh, but uh, it'll be my first attempt and I wanted to do it using some box fans I had sort of inherited and this filter that I just bought for about five bucks. So it'll be a really simple experiment. And I'll use this for kind of filtering out a garage and basement, somewhere where uh, it's not like a bedroom where you're gonna want a really nice high-end HEPA filter. Uh, this whole thing will cost me maybe $5.50 with the duct tape. So it'll be a fun experiment, but pretty low stakes. I'll be using a 20 inch box fan. Again, I inherited this, pretty sure it works, but I have three or four of them lying around. It's kind of an old junker. I don't even know what brand it is. Uh, Lasco, I guess they make most of them. Three speed, very simple. For the filter, I'm using a Ace Hardware 20 inch by 20 inch pleated air filter. It's kind of a standard furnace filter. I'm doing a very low MERV rating. This is kind of the filtration size. It's the uh, minimum efficiency reporting value. It's a rating system developed by the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineering to give a simplistic method of comparing filters. The higher the MERV rating, the more efficient the filter at capturing smaller particles. So basically, the higher this number, the more and smaller stuff your filter could grab. Typically, if you want to stop uh, smoke in air particles, you know, if you're having forest fires in an area or a, a smoker nearby or trucks running or something like that, you want a very high MERV number. So typically, you look for a MERV 13 for uh, forest fire type particles. This is a MERV 8, which is not quite as low as it goes, but it's very low. The good thing about the MERV 8 is these things cost about, uh, again, I think I spent 5 or $6 on this. That's at Ace Hardware which uh, you know, typically is a little bit more expensive. I have some MERV 13s coming, but I'll try them on later. They're a lot more expensive. Also, MERV 8 has more airflow through it, right? So it puts less stress on your box fan. Box fans are not designed to have a filter placed at their intake or their exhaust, however you wanna do it, but we'll do it at the intake. Anyway, it's not designed for that. So the fan's gonna be working harder with a MERV 8 the fan will be working less hard, you know, incrementally less hard than it will be with a MERV 11 or 13. So this will be a good experiment to see if the fan can take it. I guess that's the basics. And I'll just be using some, some duct tape to, uh, to seal it up. So uh, with that out of the way, let's start to join these two. I will note that with the instructions online about how to make a fan like this, they're usually very unclear about the orientation of the filter and where the filter goes relative to the fan. Uh, I did a fair bit of reading and it seems like the consensus is that the best way to go is that you have your fan, it's directional, it goes this way. So this is the intake and this is the exhaust. We're gonna place the filter at the intake and you wanna have the filter, because the filter is directional, you wanna have the arrow facing towards the fan. So air will be pulled in through here, through the fan, push out. So the fan is pulling air through the filter, not pushing it. Okay, so it's sealed now. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's definitely good enough. Tried to do a kind of smooth rounding at the corner, uh, pretty straight line down the side. And then, uh, yeah, just try to make it like a sort of a cowl type shape over here to see if I could get any more efficiency out of there. I'm sure some stuff is gonna get trapped in this corner, but it's really not that big of a deal from overall energy or you know CFM loss. There you go, this is the exhaust side. And there's the intake side. It still balances. You wanna be really careful with this because you are manipulating a, you know, an electronic device 
and you're putting more pressure on this motor here. So you don't want to run these uh, if you're sleeping probably. You don't want to run it if you're not around because, uh, again, you're stressing the motor and it may not be the best idea. So kind of try to stay safe. Use your best judgment with these and don't leave them unattended. Okay, it's a moment of truth. It's plugged in. We'll see how it goes. So all three settings work. Obviously getting some airflow here, feeling some air being pulled from the back. Air doesn't seem to be coming from the sides. It'd be hard to tell because the uh, intake pressure is very low, but I could feel some pressure at the back of it pulling in. Air is definitely coming out. There's not a ton of it, but there's definitely some there. And at the higher settings, still working. I'm gonna let it run at low for a couple hours. I'll be nearby, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and pretty soon I'll be able to look at the back. We'll see if uh, dust and whatnot is collecting in the back. Should be fairly obvious if it is. And uh, we'll see if the fan motor burns out. If it doesn't, I'm gonna get this Merv 8 filter and upgrade it to an 11 or 13, depending on uh, kind of what my knees are like and how well this works. So. That pretty much covers it. Seems like a successful experiment so far. I should check back in in a couple months and see how it goes.